All right, so we are going to be making the large Rossitron today. Um, so first step is to print your pattern piece, or you can print the entire pattern if you want, or just print the pieces. Um, if you want only your pattern pieces for the large bag, you'll print pages 11 to 15. And for the small, you'll print 16 to 19. Um, make sure that you are using Adobe Acrobat Reader and that you're printing the pattern out at 100% or actual size. Um, I find that it also helps to click on like, I think it's, it used to be auto rotate and center. It might be like auto portrait and landscape or something. Um, so I always click that box though. Make sure that I print it at 100%. So then once you print on each page of the pattern pieces, there is a one inch square. So you will measure that square to make sure that it measures exactly one inch. Um, and I always measure each page just because if settings were off, if it was um, like fit to page or something, it could print each page at a different scale. So I always check all of my boxes, make sure that they're all one inch exactly. All right, these are my small pieces. I'm going to set those aside for now because we are going to make a large bag today. So, and I think I might do a second video for this one <clears throat> um, of the small bag as well. So I have all my materials picked out. Um, I'm going to use a vinyl for my contrast, which this vinyl, I don't know if it shows in the video, kind of, um, like under a fluorescent lights, you can see the color and it changes. Um, if you use a flash camera to take a picture of it, it's like insanely reflective, colorful. I got this from Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. Um, I think their website is B and J or BJ's Odds and Ends. I don't, I'll, I'll link that in the description. Um, this is Tula Pink line work fabric that I'm going to use for the exterior. And then I just have um, a solid black that I'm going to use for my lining. So first step, we are going to cut out all of the pattern pieces. Um, if you like to reuse your patterns to make the same bag multiple times, then I like to print on cardstock. Um, you can also get templates for my patterns at uh, Tops and Bobbins. So just cut along the solid black line of each pattern piece. Okay, once all of the pattern pieces are cut out, um, we're going to tape together the ones that have matching letters. I would like to point out that I do have a list here of um, the additional pieces that need to be cut that don't have pattern pieces. So I also list those pieces with their measurements in the cut list. So what I like to do, even if I don't print all the instructions, I will always print page two and three. Um, so that way I have the list of what needs to be cut out of each fabric or interfacing type and then I will check it off as I cut so that way I make sure I don't miss anything. I mean if we're being serious I usually cut out as I go and it makes it take way longer. Um, the only time I cut out everything ahead of time is when I'm making a video. I'm so awesome like that. So we'll match these up. Um, the letter A pieces, which is the side panel for the small pattern, um, there are no pieces that need taped. So I always use my fun washi tape for this. Let's 
from that. All right, and then B. The, so there are only two pieces that need tape, the large side panel and the large lining main. Everything else will have printed out in its full form. Alright, so now we'll just start with exterior fabric um, and work our way down the cut list. So I need two sign panels. I'm going to cut my um, front pieces first because I want a fussy cut. So let's see. Out of the exterior, we will need two side panels, one bottom main, one bottom main folded under, two top mains, and then pocket zipper tabs and a main zipper tab. So the piece that's going to be on the front is this pattern piece folded down at the dash line um, because that is the front pocket. So this dash line is half inch down from the top. So, and then the back does not have a zipper um, pocket. If you wanted to put a zipper pocket across the back of your bag as well, then you would just make two of the front zipper pocket parts, um, and that would be super easy to make the front and back both have a pocket. All right, so let's see. I think I'm going to use pink zippers. Oh, whatever. I wanted I wanted to maybe get a portion of the fabric that had some pink in it on the front, but I don't... It kills me to cut, like, right out of the middle of the fabric. So I think I'll make those pink hearts and purple hearts be along the top main for the front. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just cut my back pieces first, and the green one here can go on the back. So I'm just folding this um, so that the hearts and the peacocks, are these? Yeah, they're peacocks. So that they are centered um, on the fold. So then when I cut on the fold, I'll have those peacocks centered um, on my bag. So let's see. I'm going to cut this piece first. You know what? No, that's not going to fit right. I want this in the front of my... Does it matter if they're not centered on the back? They're not going to be. They're going to be right here. I could use a new blade on my rotary cutter. Um, so I like to just put the pattern piece down on the fabric and then cut around it with my rotary cutter. Um, this is even easier if you've printed on cardstock or if you buy the acrylic templates, then you would just cut around those. Um, I'm going to, let's see. Oh, well, that was dumb. I guess the peacocks won't be centered on the front of my bag, and I don't care. The heart, the heart, those three hearts will be centered. That's fine. That's what we say now, right? It's fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. This is what I meant to do.
Um, this is helpful too if you to keep your pieces organized you can mark on the back what they are or I use a post-it note sometimes to write the um, pattern piece name on it so that you just don't get your pieces mixed up. I'm going to use this for my front top. So I have two bottom mains. One is cut shorter um, with the pattern piece folded down at the dash line and then I'll need two top mains. In the side panels. Okay, I do want my side panels to match, so at least kind of. I think this will be cut from here if this is long enough. How oh, it is not long enough. So then I'll take my cut list, um, of course I don't have a pen, but I'm just going to mark off each item. I'm going to cut out my contrast. Um, since I'm using vinyl, I will not cut out fusible woven for those pieces. Um, it, it's pretty thick. This won't need to be interfaced. Um, if your vinyl is thinner, maybe you'll want to interface it still. So definitely take into consideration what you're using or you can um, just use 
uh, quilting cotton as I've recommended in the pattern. The directions will be the same for both. Um, so I'm just going to cut out everything else and then we'll be back. All right, I'm going to use my heat press to fuse the um, woven interfacing to the fabric pieces. So be really careful because it's very hot. Um, right now it's at 410 degrees. I think I have it set to 415, so it just isn't completely heated up yet. Um, so I'm just going to lay each of, these are my exterior fabric pieces. I lay the fabric right side down and I lay the woven interfacing glue side against the wrong side of the fabric. Um, I'm going to mist it with a little bit of water. This makes a lot quicker work of fusing your interfacing versus using an iron. I give it a second for the water to kind of uh, shrink up the interfacing. And then I press it down for 10 to 15 seconds. Um, if you are using vinyl for your exterior contrast, you will not be fusing woven interfacing to those pieces. Um, and this is just, I think, 14 inch square heat press that I bought on Amazon. Um, I don't remember, well, I guess this is the brand Fancier Studio. Um, I really just kind of looked for what one was cheap and had decent reviews. Um, I used to have a steam press and that works just as well, um, but the area was smaller. But I did the same with that. I sprayed it with water. I didn't typically put water in it. So. So just that quick. A couple bubbles in that one so if you feel um, that the interfacing is not completely adhered to it go ahead and stick it back in there um, you can tighten it up with this so that it presses down um, harder puts more pressure Definitely hot. 
also did kind of go in and pre-press my fabric pieces um, so that they aren't wrinkly and I wasn't um, ironing or fusing the interfacing to wrinkly fabric. I'm just using a solid black for my lining. Here's my exterior or my main zipper tab, um, and then I have my front pocket zipper tab pieces as well. So I'll just go ahead and do all of these at once. pieces were stuck to the top because I'm bad and I don't put a Teflon sheet up there like I should. So far I haven't had a problem. I just don't put the right side of my fabric against the top part of the press. Actually almost done. So this definitely makes the fusing process much, much faster. Alright, and we are not at this point fusing any of the foam um, or basting it to anything. Um, we will baste the foam in a moment. And I did already um, fused. I already fused the um, Decoville Heavy to the bottom center of the exterior um, bottom panel. So it should be centered and I did fuse that in place. So most vinyl is okay if you fuse it from the wrong side. I did not put it in my heat press 
Um, I don't know if it can withstand that, but I didn't want to find out. So I did that part with my iron. One more piece and we are all fused. These are the interior lining pockets. So let's head over to the sewing machine and start sewing. Okay, so the first part of sewing that we're going to do is um, still before step one. It's in the cut pieces and fuse interfacing section. Um, and right now we are going to baste the foam to the exterior bottom panel. And then we're going to also base the foam to um, the side panels. So I'm just going to pin this in place or clip, clip it in place. Um, I'm using vinyl for my exterior bottom panel, but I still will put foam on it. Um, if your vinyl is really thick, which this is actually pretty thick, um, you may want to skip the foam. I think I'm going to um, make my small bag with Decoville Light instead of foam to see how that turns out, and then that could be an option. So, um, foam's not always my favorite. So I'm just going to base this in place. Um, if you're sewing on a domestic machine, you could use a zigzag stitch, um, and that way the foam is more compressed. But I'm just going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can just use a long stitch length since you're basting. So the foam is basted. Um, the firm fusible stabilizer is um, already fused to the wrong side of the vinyl and it's centered. So make sure that that is um, in between the exterior main, no, exterior bottom panel and the foam is the firm stabilizer. Um, let's see, so now we'll go ahead and baste the foam to the side panels. 
the top of the foam is trimmed back um, so that the top of the bag will fold in properly when it's finished. Um, so I'm going to line this up around the bottom and sides. And I have my woven interfacing is already fused in place here. I'm going to use again a quarter of a quarter inch seam allowance. And then this part is optional, um, but I like it to baste, um, the stitches will show on the outside of the bag. So I'm going to take my chalk pencil, you want to use something that is um, erasable, and I'm just going to move the side panel pattern piece with the top trimmed away for the cutting the foam. I'm going to line it up with the side and then move it down about a quarter of an inch off the bottom um, so that the top of the foam extends past this line that you're about to draw. And then I'm just going to trace along the top edge of this. And again, I'm about a quarter of an inch down from where the top of the foam is. And then we'll sew through this line um, and that way the foam is attached to the side panel along the top as well. So not, I'm sure you can't see this chalk pencil, but I can just barely see the line. Um, you can also just kind of feel where your foam is, or you could do it from the wrong side, but I prefer, since the stitches do show on the outside of the bag, to do it from the right side. And then I'm just sewing directly along um, that marked line. Okay. This should also help um, the sides to fold in properly on the finished bag. how that and it has just um, it's holding down the top of the foam holding it to the um, side panel so we'll repeat that with the other one um, and this also I'm using fusible foam um, but I do not like to fuse it it's Pellon brand I don't like to fuse it to my fabric because it wrinkles and like once it wrinkles I can't get the wrinkles out so um, I'm just fusing the non or I'm putting the non fusible side against my fabric and then just basting it in place and using it as if it was not fusible at all um, when I get done and I push my lining down inside my bag and then I can press from the lining side and it kind of adheres the lining to the other side of the foam and it helps the lining to stay down inside the bag really nicely. All right, I don't want wrinkles in my fabric either. Oh, and I like to sew with the foam side up because I feel like um, when you sew with the fabric side up, that can wrinkle it 
know. It just seems to work better with foam side up, even though it's more of a pain because then you have to actually cut your foam down to the correct size ahead of time instead of using, you know, a large piece of foam and then trimming it to match your fabric. for this side. I wish this line showed up a little better, but I don't want it to show up after I'm done, so I'll stick with the chalk pencil. Now we can get on to step one and the actual assembly. Now that our foam is, so we still have the foam panels that we cut out of the lining main panel. Those are not fused to anything yet. Um, they will, they will be basted on to the back of the exteriors after we assemble everything. So I'm going to set these aside and we are going to start out with um, 12 inch zipper, 13 inch length of fusing zipper by the yard. Let's see if I cut that right. I did. Okay. So first thing we want to do, um, zipper is right side up. I'm going to place a lining zipper tab, um, against the wrong side of the zipper and then right side down on top of the zipper is an exterior zipper tab those in place. Let me go ahead and place them on the other end too. Same way. So the exterior is right side down against the right side of the zipper and the lining is right side against the back side of the zipper. And this zipper is um, gunmetal looking um, nylon coil zipper that I get from Mormino. No, yep, Mormino.com. And these are her zipper poles too, pop tab zipper poles, and they're my favorite. Um, I'm going to use a shorter stitch length, so I put it on about three. I always use a shorter stitch length for like the assembly parts, and then a longer stitch length for my top um, top stitching, and I'll use like a four and a half or five, depending on materials. I feel like on fabric I like to use um, like a four and a half or four and a quarter stitch length. But if I was stitching on vinyl, um, I would use a longer stitch length. Work, work. So I'm just sewing these tabs on at a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to press the tabs wrong sides together and away from the zipper. All right, the zipper tabs are pressed away from the zipper and wrong sides together. And now I'm going to top stitch um, one eighth of an inch from the seam on each side.
that was step one and two. So now with the shorter exterior bottom main right side up, so we have two bottom exterior mains. Make sure that you grab the one that is shorter. So this one is shorter. That's for the front. Don't get the wrong one. Um, the back one is taller. So I want my zipper to be closing to the left. So I'll place it face down. Um, and actually you want it to be centered. This with the tabs attached is a little bit longer. Um, than the panel. All right, where's my, I'm just going to mark the centers. Um, I know some people mark centers by clipping like, and that's fine on your fabric, but I wouldn't clip the zipper because eventually it could fray and pull out. I've seen it happen. So I don't, I don't clip into the zipper tape. Okay, so I marked the centers there, and I'm going to mark the center along the top of the shorter um, bottom main panel. All right, so let's try that again. Right side down, I'm going to match the centers. And clip. And again, the zipper with the tabs is a little bit longer, and that's fine, and we'll trim that off later. Okay. So I'm going to... Again, switch to my shorter stitch length. And I'm using first a quarter inch seam allowance here. Seam allowances change um, often through this pattern, so make sure that you pay attention to what the seam allowance should be. Now we want the shorter lining bottom panel. Um, so again, we have two. The shorter one will go um, right sides together with the exterior bottom panel with the zipper sandwich between. I'm just matching up um, along the top edge and the ends of the lining bottom panel will match up with the ends of the exterior bottom panel. So you don't have to worry about finding centers on that. All right, and then here we're just going to sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. that when you get to your zipper pull that you move it out of the way.
now we're going to flip these panels wrong sides together and I'm going to press the seam. All right, the panels are pressed wrong sides together away from the zipper. And now I'm going to top stitch using an eighth of an inch seam allowance beneath the zipper. upgrading my sewing machine to an industrial walking foot um, so if you're watching this and you have one let me know in the comments um, if you have one what it is and if you love it because I need to start researching that I think I'm ready for an upgrade um, okay so now I'm going to place the taller lining bottom main will be right side up and then I'm going to lay the assembled pocket pieces directly on top. Um, you'll be matching up all the edges and it should line up with the top of your zipper. And then I'm going to clip it in place along the top. to sew zipper side up so we're going to just kind of base this on using a quarter inch seam allowance um, and then we'll use a 3 8 inch seam allowance for the next part I always just move the zipper pulls out of the way as I sew past them which is um, your exterior contrast, so mine is vinyl. So I'm going to, one long side is shorter. So you want to match up the longer long side, um, matching the center. So I had marked the top of the center of my zipper and I have the center marked on my accent stripe from when I cut it out. Um, so when I cut my vinyl pattern pieces out, I, here I'm gonna sew this from the wrong side. I um, just trace the pattern pieces onto the wrong side of the vinyl and then I cut around the vinyl with my scissors. Um, and I just find that's easier than like trying to fold anything in half and cutting a fold for vinyl. It's just thick and awkward. And I find it easier to trace on my vinyl. All right, so now we're going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. accent straight in place. Um, your accent stripe could also be cotton, which I think on my small I'm going to do that. If I have enough of the fabric that I'm thinking of, um, I know what I'm going to do. I'm a little excited about it. You press the accent stripe up and away from the zipper, pressing the seam allowance up as well. Top stitch along the top edge, 
using a one eighth inch seam allowance. So I can't actually press this because it is a vinyl. So I'm just folding the seam allowance will point up and then the accent stripe will point up. So you're folding your vinyl. So I'm just going to start at the beginning. Um, I may need, may need a Teflon foot just sew on this. So hope, hopefully not because I didn't change my foot. It seems like not sticky vinyl, so I think it'll be okay with my regular foot. And then I'm just pressing it away from the zipper as I go and making sure that my seam allowance is also still folded up. And again, this um, vinyl that I'm using is from Bob and Jen's Odds and Ends. Um, and they have a lot of different cool vinyl that I haven't seen before. Um, I, I really like this holographic type. I don't know if that's what it's called, but they have retail. And then I believe they also do custom orders. I just picked up a couple rolls of stuff they had on retail. They shipped it out super quick too. Okay, so there's my accent stripe. Seam allowance is pressed up toward that vinyl. So now we're going to repeat this to attach the accent stripe to the taller um, back, whatever this part's called. The bottom, yes, the bottom exterior bottom main. So this is the one that will be the back of the bag. Um, and it does not have a pocket, but we want to sew an accent stripe on it as well so that it matches the front of the bag. If you wanted to sew a pocket, you would just make two of what we just did with the zippers. And then you could have a pocket on the front and back. Okay, so this one, I'm again using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then again, we're going to press that seam allowance, which is a little bit, it's a little tough because the vinyl doesn't want to press up, um, like it naturally falls the other way. So you'll have to fold it up since you can't iron it. But we're, the seam allowance is up and the accent stripe is folded away from the bottom main panel. And I'm going to top stitch that using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to continue to fold the accent stripe up away from the bottom main as I go and make sure that the seam allowance is also folded back. Alright, so now we have our accent stripe attached to both. Um, here's where you want to trim the ends of the pocket zipper tabs so even with the sides of the pocket if necessary. So on the small bag you don't have as much to trim away. Um, 
Where are my scissors? So I'm just going to trim that off to be even. Okay, now we are on step nine. Okay, so now we're going to make our um, handle connectors. So I'm just going to set these aside. All right, so you have four handle connector pieces. On the wrong side, we're going to draw a line down the center. So it's one inch in from the side on the large, um, three quarters of an inch in from the side if you're making the small. And then we're going to use double-sided tape and I'm just putting a line of it down each side of the line. And I get this double-sided tape from Wawak, Wawak, however you say that. So let me do this with all of them. You don't have to use double-sided tape if you don't want to. I just think that it makes it easier when you work with vinyl um, or leather or cork if you use double-sided tape. Now we're going to peel the tape away and then press the um, raw edge into the center line. So both raw edges on the sides will meet in the center. And then we're going to top stitch down each side. Oh, I got this silver and all over me. All right, so be careful with that. Let me, I'm just going to stick all these down first and that way I can top stitch them all at the same time. I'm not just throwing all my paper on the floor. I keep a trash can down there. No, but they're on the floor anyway, so. So those are meeting in the center of the back, and now I'm just going to top stitch all of them down both sides. So what I'm actually going to do is kind of chain stitch, chain piece, I don't know, chain stitching, this is, I know people do this in quilting a lot. 
when you're sewing like a lot of pieces together and then you just cut them all apart when you're done whether this is saving you time or anything I don't know but I could have also made this all one long piece and then cut them into two inch sections when I was done Now I'm just going to snip these apart. All right, and now we want to place a rectangle ring on each one of them, fold it in half, and I'm just going to base the ends together using a quarter inch seam allowance. side doesn't want to stay. That's probably not my smartest idea to put a clip right there. These seem really small, but half inch, well, yeah, they are really small. Half an inch of it is going to be um, inside the seam allowance. So all four of our strap connectors are made. So now I want the exterior top main right side up. I'm going to fold in half, I'll just do one at a time, to mark the center along the bottom straight edge. I'm just going to put a tiny snip there. Um, and then we want to mark from that center mark, two and a half inches to each side. Um, if you're making this small, it's going to be two inches to either side of that mark. So let's see, let's put this at five. Two and a half inches to either side. Two and a half would be there and there. Okay, oh, let's actually do this one too. Just 
So now, at that two and a half inch mark, okay, we're going to, I'll do one at a time. <clears throat> You're going to place your strap connectors just outside. So here's my two and a half inch mark and I'm lining that strap connector up with it so it's to hoard the outside of the bag from where the mark is though. And I'm just going to base this in place again using a quarter inch seam allowance. the same on the other side. Here's my mark and I'm just going to place the connector to the outside of that mark and then baste that in place as well. Also using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to do it from this side so that I can see it better where the mark is. Repeat that on the other top main. So let's see. There's one mark. And you may, if you have like a hump jumper or whatever, um, when you sew the next part, you might want to use that. going to start, it doesn't matter which one you use first, I'm going to start with my back. Um, you want to place your top main, yes, top main, right side down um, against the exterior and the accent stripe. I'm going to make sure the center is matched up. Um, I think because I traced my accent stripe and then cut it out with scissors. It ended up just a tiny bit wider than my fabric pieces and that won't really matter. But I will confirm all those measurements as well. All right, so now we want to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to use a shorter stitch length. And when you sew over the strap connectors, make sure your hardware is pulled all the way away from where you're sewing. And it will be kind of thick across there, especially if you use vinyl. strap connector so all right my 
sewing machine does not like to backstitch it looks across super thick areas so what I'm going to do is go back across that just with another line of stitching directly along the same line um, since I didn't backstitch on it and see how it does nope Pressing the accent stripe, so the seam allowance is toward the accent stripe, and I'm top stitching along the top of the accent stripe using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I don't have a hump thumper, so I need something kind of thick to stick under the front of this to keep my foot even. See how that works, and I'll move it out of the way. I'm just taking it slow, one stitch at a time, and hand cranking to make sure that I'm not skipping stitches here. And I was just digging in my garbage. sewing machine's about to be free to a good home because we're off. okay so now we can continue one eighth inch seam allowance let's see how it does on the other handle connector I don't skip any stitches when I go up onto the thicker part just when I come down off of it So if you don't have a like a heavy duty sewing machine, you probably don't want to use um, a thick vinyl for your accent stripe and your handle connectors and such. All right, so matching the centers up again. Half inch seam allowance. Make sure that your hardware on your strap connectors is pulled all the way up into the 
fold. All right, and then I'm gonna actually come back through and sew across those again instead of trying to back stitch. My sewing machine's mad at me today, I think. Or this vinyl is also very thick. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to sew directly over my previous stitching line about an inch or so before the connectors and then I'm just going to sew across them again. And I'm sewing from the other side because my sewing machine did skip st stitches. I might as well just sew all the way along. I went ahead and top stitched the other side um, off camera just because my sewing machine was not happy with this thick area. This vinyl is very thick. So always know the limitations of your sewing machine. Um, right now I'm going to finish basting down the sides of my pocket. I don't know how necessary this is since we're going to baste the whole thing to foam in a minute, but I put it in the direction so we better do it right. I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance. So now we need to base the foam to the exterior panels. Um, if you want to use rivets here, you can put a rivet in the accent stripe beneath each of the handle connectors. Um, okay, so, add, right, so I've trimmed a quarter inch off the top of each foam panel and these foam panels were cut out using the lining main panel. Let's see. I want to make sure um, that the foam is about a quarter of an inch away from the top. I wonder if I already trimmed those earlier. I think I did. And then just trim them right now. So I'm just going to line this up down the sides.
I mentioned already that I kind of hate foam. Thank you. I want to make sure that my fabric is nice and tight to the foam. You don't want your fabric to be wrinkled up away from it. Um, I think if I was going to put rivets in, I might actually put the foam in place first and then um, insert the rivets through the foam too. is in place so I'm going to baste this on I'm just basting my sides because I just made my foam too short and now it's the foam to the back um, exterior and I'm making sure that I don't have like since I said I have fusible foam here I don't want the fusible side against my fabric because I don't want to fuse it to my exterior on accident it wrinkles up Your fabric's nice and tight on your foam. Base this side. We want an exterior main panel, right sides up, and then place a the exterior bottom panel, right sides down. And I'm going to clip in place. along the bottom edge of the main panel. Now I'm going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance.
going to press the seam allowance toward the bottom panel and then we're going to top stitch here. Again, using vinyl so we're not actually going to press it. And I'm going to use an eighth inch seam allowance. Um, you might like to use a quarter inch seam allowance for this top stitch. I find sometimes on bottom panels that a, a whole quarter inch can look a little bit better or be easier to do too. So as I sew, I'm just making sure that the seam allowance stays folded toward the bottom panel. to place the other um, exterior main panel right sides down on the bottom panel. No, right sides together. Throw some clips around. I'm going to clip this in place. I'm going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance again. And then we'll top stitch this as well um, using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and pressing the seam allowance toward the bottom panel. I hope I don't run out of bobbin thread soon. Alright. So let's go on to our pockets and side panels. So I'm going to set this aside for now. So I have two um, exterior contrast side pocket panels, pocket panels, what do I call those? Side pocket, exterior side pocket. So, and then I have two lining exterior side pocket, no, <laughs> lining side pockets. 
So I'm going to place those right sides together and pin together along the top. And I'm going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. to do the same thing with the other two side pockets. Right sides together, pin along the top. And then I'm going to sew using a half inch seam allowance. going to flip these wrong sides together and I would press it um, but since I'm using vinyl I'm not going to but I will place a couple clips across the top to hold it down all right, and then we're going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Repeat that with this one. Okay, so now we want to match up the bottom and the corners of the pockets to a side panel. The pockets are a little bit wider at the top than the side panels, and this is so that it flares out from the side of the bag. So I'm going to place a couple of clips around the curves and along the bottom. And then I'm going to bring the pocket up the side of the side panel, just lining up the straight edge with the side of the side panel. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side panel or the other side of the pocket. And then the um, pocket actually is bowing up in the center away from the side panel. All right, now I'm just basting this on using a quarter inch seam allowance.
we'll repeat that with the other side pocket on the other side panel. Um, and I think in the directions I actually have you match the centers um, of the bottom as well. So the center should be marked on the bottom of your side panel, on the wrong side of your side panel. So the side pockets are attached to the side panels. That was step 16. Step 17, we're going to attach the side panels to the exterior main panels. Yeah, we were also supposed to mark the center of our bottom panel, and we didn't, so we can do that now. It's fine. All right, I'm going to just put a tiny little clip into the seam allowance at the bottom center of each of these, and I'm just folding it in half to find the center. And then I'll do the same thing with my, no, I won't. I don't want to, yes, I am. Okay, I'm just going to fold it. I could measure, but who wants to measure anything? Make sure if you do that, you keep your little clips in the seam allowance. Okay, so we only need one side panel at this point. So first we're going to match the bottom center. Let me turn these threads. We're going to match the bottom center of the side panel to the bottom center, or to the side center of the bottom panel. We're going to be sewing this with the um, side panel up towards the presser foot and the main panels will be down towards the bed of your sewing machine. Okay, so first I match the bottom centers and I put a couple clips in and then I'm matching the top corners of the main panel to the top corners of the side panel. And I'll put a few clips here. And then I'm going to clip down the sides. Okay. 
and then ease around the bottom corner. And then we'll repeat that with the other side. We'll pin at the top corners. Nothing comes off. So this large size is a pretty big bag. All right, I'm going to switch back to a shorter stitch length for this. And I'm using a one half inch seam allowance. going to get in here with my tweezers and just kind of make sure <clears throat> around the curves here that everything stays lined up and I'm just going to use my tweezers to hold things down where I don't want my fingers. I had no plans to sew through my finger today so hopefully I don't. bottom corners are a little tricky because they're kind of tight. So just take it slow and rotate the bag around as you go. This is definitely easier with an industrial machine because the end is flat here. Um, so you can work your bag around like that. It's harder on a domestic machine than industrial. I don't know what I said before if I said industrial or domestic, but easier on an industrial. Here I'm just pulling all my clips right off. It's helpful. I like to put my um, left hand inside the bag when I'm working to help me keep things lined up and moving and I just find it easier. And I'm also using my tweezers. Oh, so some of you that staple, this would probably be a good, good use of staples.
so after you sew that, now you want to trim the seam allowance. And I'm trimming it down to, I don't know, about between half an inch, or a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch. ahead and repeat the process to attach the other side panel. So first I'm matching up the bottom center. This is killing my shoulders. I'm just sewing again using a one half inch seam allowance. Keep in mind that. Um, the vinyl, I'm using vinyl 
as my exterior contrast and that's making things a little more difficult. So um, if you use all fabric, this will be way easier, which is what I'm going to use on my small bag. So let's trim the seam allowance on this one down to just be careful not to accidentally trim through your seam. So I kind of where I have my um, line of basting from the foam. I kind of just trim just inside of that. All right. So the exterior is together. All right, I just grabbed all of the lining panels. So this is the bottom panel there are two lining main panels so you want to make sure that you have the um, wider edge at the bottom and then side. okay so we have um, an interior zipper pocket and one lining main panel, right sides together. I'm going to measure one inch down from the top of the lining main panel. And we want to center this. That's where we'll place the interior zipper pocket panel. And then one inch down from the top of that, I want to draw a box here that is 12 inches wide and one half inch tall. So, and I make it nice and wide to help with turning the bag right sides out when you're done. So and then one half inch down from that line, draw our second line. Then I'm 
going to get a few pins. And we'll pin this pocket panel to the lining main panel. Now we're going to stitch in place around that box. Just sewing directly along the line. And generally I would back stitch at the beginning and I didn't, but I'll back stitch over that when I get to the end. Always pivot at the corners with your needle in the down position. So now, directly along the center of the box that we drew, and we just sewed around, so one quarter inch up from the bottom, I'm going to draw a line that stops about half an inch from the end of the box at each end. And then from each end of that line, I'm going to draw a line to each of the corners of the box. Now I'll take my scissors, I'm going to fold this together. All right, so I just cut through both panels and I'm going to cut all the way down that line. When I get to where I drew that V, I'm going to cut up to each of the corners and get as close to the corner as you can, but don't clip through your stitches. Go the other direction. All right, so I'm going to pull the um, lining interior zipper pocket panel through the hole that I just made and press the box that we sewed around really well, and that will be the opening for our zipper. All right, so I just pressed my zipper pocket, interior zipper pocket panel toward the wrong side of the lining main panel. Um, now we will take our zipper. So this should be your 12 inch long um, number three zipper. So a 12 inch long zipper should exactly fit inside the pocket. 12 inches measures um, the zipper from one end to another. I'm going to open it up slightly and we'll just line it up inside there. So I'm going to use um, an Elmer's washable school glue stick and I'm going to put it right along the edge of the lining side 
of the box and try to be neat with this. Um, it dries clear, but on black fabric, it will probably look crusty. So this is just the easiest way I've found to hold my zippers in place. I'm going to flip that over and now I just want to line the zipper up so that it's going straight down the center. And then I just kind of firmly press it with my fingers once I have it lined up nicely. All right, now this doesn't hold like super well. Like it's not gonna, you couldn't carry it across the room probably, but I can slide it over to my sewing machine easy enough. All right, and then I'm just going to Top stitch using a 1 8 inch seam allowance again. And my longer stitch length all the way around the box to hold the zipper in place. rip my whole zipper right off there. interior zipper is in. Now we want our other interior zipper pocket panel right sides together with the one that's already attached to the bag. We're going to leave the bottom of this pocket open. So I'm just going to take some clips and clip up the sides and around the top of the pocket panels. And I'm just going to make sure that this is not, yep. I just want to make sure that uh, one of these is not like my bottom panel. Even though I said mark your pieces, I didn't do it myself. All right, so now I'm going to sew 
the pocket panels together using a one half inch seam allowance. Up one side, across the top, and then down the other side. And I'm just folding the lining main panel back out of the way as I go. trim these seam allowances down um, to about eighth of an inch, eh, quarter of an inch, between quarter and eighth. I'm not usually very exact, um, but I am trimming it so that when we sew this, it's easier to keep that out of the side seam, to keep the pocket pieces out of the side seams. So just be careful not to trim your stitching. And if your zipper was longer than 12 inches, um, that would be fine. And you just trim the ends off right there. All right, so that is the end of, or that's step 21. Now we want to repeat steps 13 to 14 to attach the lining mains to the lining bottom panel. Then repeat step 17 to attach the lining side panels. So right now, all right, here's my lining bottom panel. Place it right sides together, matching up the bottom edge. And I'm going to pin that in place. So with this side up so I can keep an eye on my pocket and make sure I don't somehow get that caught in the seam. a one half inch seam allowance. Top stitch along the seam through the bottom panel using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. line up the other um, lining main panel. If you want to add any other additional pockets, you might want to do that now before you sew the panels to the bottom panel. Um, you could definitely add some slip pockets. You could add them on the same side as the zipper pocket, so it would be beneath it. Um, you could add like accordion type slip pockets, which I I think one of my testers actually did that. So yeah, any extra pockets that you want to add, do that now. Maybe a slip pocket for your phone. All right, half inch seam allowance. this seam allowance. All right, seam allowance is pressed toward the bottom panel. And now I'll top stitch using another 1 8th, 1 8th of an inch seam allowance. Alright, 
So now we want to find the bottom center of the side of the bottom panels. So I'm just finger pressing that in half and then I'll clip the fabric right at the edge. Making sure it's way within the seam allowance. Like I don't clip in any more than a quarter of an inch. All right, and then I'll do the same um, to find the centers of the bottom of the side panels. Now we're going to pin this together the same way, clip it together, whatever, the same way that we did the exterior panels, only this time there's no vinyl and it's going to be way easier. So I just put a few clips along the bottom edge after I match the center up and then I'm matching up the top corner. And then I'm going to continue down the side of the side panel, matching up the edges. So the only thing we'll have to do is as we sew around this, we'll have to make sure that we pull the lining um, zipper pocket back out of the way. And I just threw the other side panel right on the floor. All right, so I want to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this. And that will just help the um, entire lining to fit down inside of the exterior better since we used foam. You don't want a lining that's really baggy and doesn't fit well. We're going to trim this seam allowance down as well.
attention. Alright, so let's put this side panel on. Finally almost done. Kind of. We still have to make straps. You know, I should always sew the handles at the beginning because I hate when I get done and I have to make handles. And I don't even know how many bags that I've left sitting there overnight because they didn't have handles and I didn't feel like making them. I know the, the lining pockets seem pretty wide, but that's just to make it easier um, to turn the finished bag right side out through the pocket because it's kind of a big bag, especially using vinyl. You need all the help you can get. Again, five eighths inch seam allowance, and I did fold the um, interior zipper pocket out of the way so that I don't accidentally sew through it. I'll trim this seam allowance down as well, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Make sure you are not cutting your interior zipper pocket. So I went ahead and took the main zipper tab and draw a line down the center of the long ways, lengthwise, oh my god, draw a line lengthwise down the center, fold both of the long edges into the center line, fold each of the short ends up half an inch to the back, and then press the whole thing in half. So now all the raw edges are enclosed inside. and. This is what you have. So then we're going to 
slip it onto the end of your zipper. Um, and I'm hoping this zipper is long enough because I cut it a little bit shorter than I have listed in the pattern. But like I always say, um, I'm, you know, the pattern is not complete yet when I do my video. So sometimes there could be a change um, from what I say or do here to what the finished pattern is. So um, I just didn't want that long of a zipper. I don't really care for super long like zipper tails hanging down. So by the time you get the pattern, whatever size that is listed will be correct. I'm just using a 1 8 inch seam allowance all the way around the zipper tab. I forgot to change my stitch length. So. Oh, and also if you have, um, like the metal zipper ends, you could use those. Alright, one zipper tab in place. So now we're going to open up the other end of our zipper. And you want to fold the end of the zipper backwards the back of the tape at a 90 degree angle just like that and then I'm going to place a few stitches in place to hold it I'm just, I sewed about an eighth of an inch from the edge of, of the um, zipper tape. So, and then we want to do the same exact thing to the other side and make sure that it's the same distance. Um, so I'm just going to look at how much tape I have hanging off the edge here, which is about a quarter of an inch and repeat that on the other side so that it's folded back um, the same distance so that there's about a quarter of an inch of tape extending past the side. And then I'm just going to put a few stitches in that as well. So I'm just going to zip up my zipper and make sure it looks even. If it does, you want to get your main exterior, or well, I guess it's just the exterior. We want to make marks that are one half inch in from the side seams. So here's my side seam ruler and you want to make sure you keep this within the seam allowance um, and the seam allowance along the top of the bag will be two thirds, no, 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 three eighths. So one half inch in from each of the side seams on the um, top mains. So now we want to 
with our zipper and I'm going to start on the front side of the bag. And I'm going to, I'm probably gonna have to pin this all in place and then I'll show you. Um, so first I'm just lining up the front part of the zipper where it's folded back. I kind of line up the teeth that go vertical with that half inch mark. Just make sure you have like um, an exact point that you're lining up that you do the same on the other side. So I just like to line it up with the teeth. And then I'm pinning, clipping, and I find this easier if the zipper's unzipped. And I'm clipping all the way down the length of the top main until we get to that other half inch mark. And when we reach the other half inch mark, we want to veer the zipper down away from the top edge. So it's not an actual, like, it's not folded over. It's just bent, I guess. All right, so here is my half inch mark. And so the zipper will just curve down at that point. And I'm not even gonna pin that. I'll just make sure I get it right. And then at the front, my half inch mark is lined up with like this part of the teeth. All right, so we're going to baste that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I always sew it to the front of the bag first so that way my zippers are opening. Um, in the same direction. So watching when I get to that second line, not quite there yet. that in place. All right, and then we're going to line up the zipper on the other um, top main of the back of the bag the same way. So the front of the teeth that are folded back are lined up with the one half inch mark at the beginning. I'm not going to have you trim the foam down at all. It's easier. It'd be easier that way, I think. It'll be fine. Oh, my neck is killing me. All right. So now, again, we're starting at the other end where the zipper veers down at that half inch mark. So I'm just kind of Curving it down inside the bag at that point. And then I will start sewing right there. What 
quarter inch seam allowance. double check if I need to fix any of that. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so now we're going to turn the lining right side out. We want to unzip our interior zipper pocket. We are on step number uh, 26. So we're going to place the lining inside the exterior, matching up the um, interior zipper pocket side with the back of the bag. Push it down in there and now I want to match up all four of my corner seams first and I'm just going to pin clip those tuck the zipper down in between Sure the zipper is down out of the seam allowance. Maybe if I stand up to clip this, it will not hurt my neck as much. Now we'll go ahead and clip everything in between the seams. Side pockets. I'm doing my side panels first. All right, so we've clipped all the way around the top edges. And now we're just going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So ideally this should catch all of the foam. I don't think it's going to because I think I um, trimmed too much off somehow.
so I'm just sticking my finger inside and making sure that my zipper stayed curved down. Um, and then I'm going to double check my other side. Also, trim off any of these extra little strings um let me i'm going to stick my hand inside the pocket and make sure that my zipper stayed where it should have been before i trim anything or turn anything right side out yeah it feels right okay so now if you want to you can trim um the seam allowance along, well, you can trim off the extra part of your zipper that's sticking up. I don't trim along the zipper. Um, you can, if you trim the edges of your zipper off, it will like pull right out of the seam. So do not trim your zipper. All right, I'm reaching in through the opening in the bottom of my um, interior zipper pocket. And I'm just going to push the whole thing out so it would be a little difficult because this vinyl is super thick so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back all right so I have the bottom opening of my interior zipper pocket pressed to the wrong side by about quarter one quarter to half an inch I didn't measure it I just eyeball it um, I'm going to place a few clips on here. I'm going to top stitch that closed or edge stitch um, so just as close to the edge as I can get. Push that pocket down inside. And I'm going to zip that pocket closed. Now I'm going to turn the whole bag inside out because I like to top stitch um, from the exterior side but laying flat on my the bed of my sewing machine. So I always top stitch my bags inside out. It doesn't have to be turned perfectly as long as the top seam is perfect. And I'm just, as I go right now, trimming any um, loose threads that I may have missed. So I already kind of pressed my top seam. when I turned it right side out. All right. So 
So I'm going to start my top stitch um, along one of the side panels just so it's not that visible. The back stitching and whatnot. I'm just going to top stitch all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and I am using my longer stitch length of uh, 4.5. I'm just stitching right beneath the zipper. Again, since I reached the other side panel, I'm just going to kind of make sure that, that the seams are pressed away from each other pretty well. Um, I'm just like rolling the seams between my fingers. And make sure that your zipper end is up out of the way. Whenever I readjust, I make sure to stop with my needle in the down position. Let me turn this back right side out and we really just have to make our handles now. All right, before we sew the straps, I'm actually going to do this part. Um, so what you're doing is around at the top of each of the four seams, you want to fold your whatever, fold the bag, lining sides together a couple clips in there and then we're going to sew using a one quarter inch seam allowance about half an inch down from the top. That's it. And this will help the um, top of the side seams to stay bent in instead of poking out. you're using a thread that will blend in with your exterior and I'm doing the same thing um, well on all four top corners
and there's actually going to be, let's see, you know, I think that will be fine. Do this to all four of the top corners. Pull my zipper out of the way. And I suppose this large one you could maybe use as a smaller diaper bag or something if you wanted to. It's a pretty big bag. And I just back stitch that quite a few times to make it really secure. of my threads down. Alright, so there's the bag completed without um, the handles yet. So let's do the handles real quick and then we're done. to use my ruler. My handles are for the large bag four inches wide, for the small bag three inches wide. So I'm just going to draw a line down the center of the wrong side of each of the handle pieces. So two inches in from the center or two inches in from the side or if it's the small bag one and a half inches in. I'm going to use my double sided tape and I'm just going to run a line of that um, down each side of the line. We are going to attach the handles with rivets, um, or you can sew them on. I definitely do not want to sew through um, that much of this vinyl on my sewing machine, so it's a very thick. It's worth it for the finished look, but definitely thick.
and then put one more line of the double sided tape. And then fold in half. This double sided tape is literally like my best friend for sewing vinyl, leather, cork. It just makes it so much easier. Alright, so then using my longer stitch length, I'm going to top stitch first down the side where the two folds are coming together. And I'm using an eighth inch seam allowance. You could put a couple extra lines of stitching on these handles if you wanted to. And then I'm just going to stitch right down the folded side as well. Also using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The very last thing we're going to do is measure. I'm uh, attaching these straps with rivets. So I have a uh, pretty long post rivets. They're 10 millimeter, I believe, from um, Gold Star Tool where I got my press. I'm marking um, my rivet hole placements right now. So I'm measuring half an inch from the raw edge and making a dot that's centered and then I'm going to measure up three inches from the raw edge and make another dot. I wouldn't normally go um, all the way up to three inches for the second dot but this vinyl is so thick that it's super bulky around the hardware. Um, so it helps to have that extra distance. So I'm just using my leather hole punch now to punch holes at each of those dots. So now I already went ahead and attached um, the handle on the back side. So let's see, I need two posts and two caps. I like to, my stitching from the top side always looks a little bit better than my stitching from um, the bobbin side. So I try to keep the top side on the exterior of my handle. I'm sure nobody ever notices that, but. All right, so then I'm just putting the post side in the front, and then I push it until I can see the post coming out of the hole in the back, and then I put the cap on it until I hear it click. Um, there are other tools for setting rivets if you don't want to invest in a press. 
it's not 100% necessary, but it makes the job a whole lot easier. So I'm just making sure that my rivets lined up. And then I just press it down really hard. And then fold the handle over and make sure it's not twisted. And we'll do the same thing. Push the post in from the front until I can see it coming out of the back. And then put the cap on. Our bag is finished. Um, one of my testers made a crossbody strap for hers that she just clipped to one rectangle ring here and then the diagonal one on the other side so that she could use her bag as a crossbody. Um, you could put long straps on this and have a shoulder bag. This one's pretty big. Um, let me show you the small size. So this is the small size in comparison. Um, there are a few changes made from when I made this bag, like it doesn't have this um, strip on the back. So there you have it. Um, yeah, I may or may not make a second video for the small bag. It's the same process. Um, I might, I want to try it with Decoville Light, I think would be a really good interfacing. So thanks for watching. <laughs>